You know, just super proud of the kids. And, you know, we've had some heartbreak this year. I mean, two of our four losses have been in overtime. We've blown some leads. But I, I think I told John in my pregame interview, uh, something good's got to come from those heartbreaks. Something good's got to come from all the film we watched and everything we went over to correct the mistakes that we made to lose those games late. And I thought those kids pulled from that tonight. I thought the effort in overtime was as good as I've seen it all year, and we were worn out. We had two, you know, Burp could not elevate tonight. She's got a lower leg injury, but she's playing through it because she knew we couldn't play without her. Obviously, Macy's trying to get back. Caitlin cramps up. You know, Hannah plays 45 minutes. I mean, Lex plays 45 minutes. I mean, these kids just gutted it out. I think that's the best way to put it. Um, but just really, really proud of Bria and Kaysen. I thought they were the difference makers. Uh, whether they didn't score a point or whether they scored two or four points, however many they had, they ran our basketball team. And to be able to do that when your all-conference point guard's not out there uh, is a pretty big deal. So the performances that Caitlin and Hannah and Burp on the boards had and Lex had defensively are awesome, but my MVPs are Bria and Kaysen for handling the pressure and getting us into what we needed to be in. What did you think when Bria drove – Drove to the basket for a wide open layup. I mean, that that's actually a play call, um, and uh, we had we had gone we were going to go with that play, and then we decided to switch it up at the last minute. But when they were taken away, we went back to it. And uh, you know, she's a heady player. I mean, she took the ball to the basket. She finished. She's a great foul shooter. So we knew if uh, if she got fouled, she'd make her free throws. So uh, I think her experience from last year and and starting all those games and being in big situations, you know made her, gave her the confidence to go make that big play, and it was huge. Could you believe how open she became? I mean, it was a wide open layup. Yeah, because four people guarding Caitlin. You know, <laughs> I mean, they, you know, they, you know, they throw everything at her. Uh, uh, but uh, but just a, just a heads-up wise play by Bria. Coach, um, you talked about that heartache. What do you think was the difference tonight in the final, let's say, six and a half minutes where you guys had to use every bit of energy in the tank just to reclaim the lead in the fourth quarter and push into that overtime and, and hold on. What do you think was the difference? We talked about getting stops. Uh, we didn't even really talk about scoring the basketball as much as we talked about getting stops because stops what got us back in the game. And then we were able to get to the foul line enough, make enough, especially in the second half, make enough free throws, miss six uncharacteristic in the in the first half that kind of drove me nuts. But uh, But the defensive stops and the defensive rebounding was what uh, was what got us back in the game. Their pressure is relentless, though. Half court, full. They gave y'all fits of turnovers tonight. They did, and I mean, part of that is is because your floor general that's been running your team for four years isn't out there. But again, I thought Casey and Bria did an amazing job of handling it. You know, Burp helped bring the ball up too. But, uh, but you know, we, we made some mistakes, and, and, and we are going to continue to make mistakes because we're still young. I mean, Bria's a sophomore, Casey's a freshman. And, um, and so we're going to make mistakes. But I felt like that the poise – that they showed late in the fourth quarter and in overtime was exceptional. And then you overcome it by making the plays in the, in the overtime, especially after going down too early. We do, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, Lex's defense was unbelievable because not only did she did she keep pace from going nuts. She was where she was supposed to be at all times. It kept other players from doing what they were supposed to do. I mean, she doesn't get enough credit for that. I've coached her for a long time. Uh, as she would say, she's a survivor. She's she survived me for many years now. Uh, but, I mean, they, she, I mean, as far as the reason we won the game, it may have been her. Because, and, and, again, it doesn't show up in the stat sheet. The casual eye doesn't see it. But as a coach, I know how important she was to us winning this game. And, and, you know, she just took it as a challenge. And uh, she didn't let her go left. Uh, the one three she made, we had switched off, and she wasn't even guarding her. And, um, I mean, again, I, I tell kids all the time, you don't have to score a point to be the MVP. And, uh, and she was definitely that for us. Coach, um, again, it's a win. I, I, I'm not trying to be negative here, but I know that in, in some conference games, it's been tough to close. Tonight, Yamaya Johnson hits a colossal three. Hannah McKay gets a decent look, decent look at a game-winning basket, tough travel in the lane. In that moment, how do you tell your team, hey, let's get to overtime, let's stay composed? What's the conversation like in, in a huddle when you're like, okay, well, we got to dig another overtime out now. How do we do this? 
Well, that's probably where our leaders step up and the assistant coaches step up because I threw a complete fit in the timeout when she made the three. You know, what are we doing? We've done this before. You know, I mean, I, I didn't handle it well. I mean, I'll tell on myself. But, you know, the senior leadership on this team, I mean, Burp looked at me and she hugged me and she's like, it's going to be fine. We're going to win this. And she looked at everybody in that huddle and she said, we're fine. She said, Hannah, forget about it. We're fine. And But that's what they do. That's what they do. So, I mean, I, I was aggravated that we let the exact same thing happen that it happened to us time and time again. But uh, but these kids pulled together. My assistant coaches do a really good job of getting them rallied together. And uh, sometimes the players can even overcome the coach. Against this team, to finally break through against Austin T, wasn't it really kind of written for it to be this kind of game where the adversity would hit? You have Caitlin down with an injury, it looks like. You're going in without Macy, the walk at the end that were denied Hannah's basket. Wasn't it really meant for this kind of finish to happen? I think it's going to be this way when we play P, just because the rivalry's there. But, I mean, they're a good team. I mean, <laughs> Mike Johnson and uh, Carly Pace were two of the best players in the conference, and now they're together. I mean, they're a good team. They have a lot of pieces, and, and Brittany's done an outstanding job this year. I'm mean, first-year coach to be have her team in position, to be a top-four team in the league. I mean, I remember where I was my first year, and it cert certainly wasn't there. So, uh, you know, they have a lot to be proud of, and they're going to build on a lot of things. But, uh, you know, it, it's just a battle. Every time you play them, they're extremely tough. How's this one feel? It feels good uh, to finally win an overtime game. I didn't want to. I didn't want Parker to put in the next story. Coach Turner's 0-3 in overtime games this year. You know, in his pregame notes. You know, you always got to look to see where the shade's being thrown. I'm just kidding. I love Parker. He's my he's my biggest fan. But um, but it's good to be able to tell these kids, see what you can do. See what you can do. You can overcome any obstacle, any challenge together. And uh, when you're as tough as as this bunch is. Any more questions? Uh, Coach, my last question. You've got a, a healthy UT Martin team that's kind of streaking a little bit right now and three games left total in conference play. How do you stay in this top two, top three conversation? Uh, what's the what's the next step? How, how do you push through in the next 240 minutes of, of regular season? Well, I mean, you have to win every game. I mean, we told our kids this with, with eight – about eight games to go. If you want a chance to be a conference champion, if you want a chance for the double bye, you got to win every game, and then you got to let everything else play out. We don't even know for sure if that's possible, even if we win every game, but we got to take one at a time. But UT Martin's dangerous, and they're real dangerous when they have all their players. Uh, you know, they beat Austin P on Monday night. I, I'm pretty sure they won tonight. Last time I saw, saw the score, they were ahead. Um, they're a very, very tough team. Kevin's a great coach, just won 250 – 50th game. He's going to have a game plan. I don't know if we're going to have Macy. There's a lot to think about, but uh, we've got to be tough and we've got to be committed to our scout and committed to our game plan come Saturday.